Um, okay, hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, we actually have a few people here, so, um, you know, as usual, if you have some questions, let me know. I didn't really have an agenda today. Um, I'm not certain if people are, when asked, are here, if they want to, they're working on assignment three. I mean, it's getting pretty close to when you're supposed to have it submitted, but, uh, but yeah, I'll be happy to answer some questions on those if you have them. Um, so go ahead. So like I said, I'm, I probably didn't have anything in particular I wanted to cover. We did, did cover assignment three quite a bit uh, on Monday, Monday's help session. So I don't really want to go back over all of that unless people want me to. Um, I mean, you know, just kind of some reminders. So this is the end of our second unit here. So, you know, besides the assignment, you need to be reviewing the chapters three and four and getting ready for the second test here and stuff. Okay, um, so I had a question about assignment three, I guess, so about the unblock event. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So yeah, the, um, I mean, if you've gotten to that point, then um, you probably have the ready queue and things going and then you're working on blocking events and unblocking events. So, let me go ahead and uh, open up here. Um, so let me just read again the description that we had in here. So that one I'm in particular, um, I mean, won't be able to do anything unless you have the block events being blocked. And, you know, to do this correctly, you have to, um, um, when, a, when an event is blocked, you have to have some way of being able to search for it um, or maybe have a separate data structure where you put your blocked event. So, um, so you have to, for the unblock event, we have to implement, um, So, uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, you could just do a simple search. So, I mean, if nothing else, something you could do, if, if you just have a process control block that's like a list or a vector or even just a plain C array, you could always just search for all the items. So what you get for unblock event, let me like find those tests then here. Um, So as usual, I'll open up, open up from the, um, the root of our um, project repository. Um, so looking at the tests, uh, we start testing unblock event all the way down here at line 500, basically. Um, so when, when unblock event is called in the simulation, you get uh, the event ID. So, so basically, uh, in at this point in the tests, the the first place where we call unblock event, um, we're already using a simulation that's been being run. So this this is uh, assuming that um, um, when you call unblock event, it looks like um, that process three, PID three was blocked waiting on event ID seven. Um, so after you call and block event, if you get that process, it should be back into a ready state, basically. So it should pass those things. So, um, so if we look for, for it, um, yeah, so I don't know if this is helping the, 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 the student that asked the question here. Um, 
So, you know, inside of the function, you just have to have some way, you have to search through all the processes. So um, I think just, just to tell you, like in my example solution that I'll post uh, sometime tomorrow here, um, I think I used like a map, uh, like a standard template library map so those are kind of fun. And so it allows me to basically um, just directly say, give me all, give me the process if there's any process that's currently blocked waiting on event ID, whatever the event ID is, like seven, right? So that, that's kind of, you know, kind of a fancy thing you can do. But uh, I mean, you know, even as a brute force kind of a thing. So I, I think last, with um, uh, on Monday, you know, I did show using like a, a vector. Um, so creating this process control block structure. So, I mean, a, a brute force way. So assuming that you've got the block event working correctly um, and that when you block an event on like, for example, here's where we at, at the, the unit test above that is where we block um, process three uh, waiting on event ID seven. So assuming this is working correctly, that should mean that um, process three has recorded that it's blocked and that it's waiting on event ID seven. So um, you could um, search through um, all your processes on your process control block uh, what you'd have to do is, is each one, one by one, you would take it off and you have to find out, okay, what is it, what event ID is it waiting on? You know, so, I mean, you could test if it's in a block state and what event ID is it working on, okay? So if you have some way of getting to all of your processes, you could do a loop, for example. Um, so if you have a process object, you know, you, you can always do things like, um, Um, uh, yeah, there's even a, a convenience method to do something like that. So you can, you can, if you have a process object, you can ask, is it waiting on event, some event ID, right? And that should, that should, this is implemented for you. That should return true if it, if, you know, so if, if you're trying to unblock something waiting on, um, so in the unblock event, if you're trying to unblock something waiting on event ID of seven, you know, you, you could simply search through all your processes and find the one and, and, and ask each one, um, is it waiting on event, that event? When you find the one that it's, um, that is waiting on an event, then you could um, call um, unblock on the process basically and put it back into your ready queue. So. All right, so I had some more questions. I, I don't know, um, is there, um, the, while I'm still talking about the unblock event, did that help any? So give some ideas. So like I said, I in my example solution, I've got a, uh, okay, well, I think so, that's good. Uh, I, I, I used a separate data structure. So uh, in like, um, so like having the process control block, I had a, se a separate data structure. I actually used a standard template library map, I think. I remember kind of um, um, at least one of the example solutions that I did, you know, so, so, I mean, you definitely probably have to have a separate structure to be a queue for your ready queue, but you could just have a regular list or something that holds just the processes that are currently blocked. But if it's just a regular list, you'll still have to do some sort of a search, but you'd have to search through your list instead of searching through all the processes in your process control block. So, you know, right. So in that case, I don't, I don't see a lot of advantage of using a separate list, just to have a list of all the things that are currently in a block state. Um, well, maybe there, there's a little bit of advantage on that because, well, if you want to do the extra credit where you get the final system test to work, uh, part of the extra credit is you have to write the uh, function to display the, the state correctly. Um, in the output operator stream. So, so that might make it useful to have just one list or something where all the block processes are in that list. So you can just iterate over that to display the blocked processes. So. Um, 
All right. So let me. The, so another. Uh, there's another question here. Um, so just in general about the time slice quantum. All right. So this the, the whole purpose of this simulation is that it's um, simulating a round robin queuing um, operating system that's managing a set of processes. Okay. So if you go back to our chapter three uh, textbook uh, for this week. Um, um, I mean, this is part of our five state and seven state um, process diagram, right? So a process that's running, um, if you're using some sort of time slice uh, uh, queuing discipline or some round robin queuing discipline, um, it can be, so a, a process can be dispatched and run on the CPU for a bit of time, but then it can time out, okay? So the timeout basically means that uh, you use what's known as a, ti as a, a, a time slice quantum um, and that's what this parameter is for our simulation here. Um, and if, if a process has been running, so when, when you start running a process, um, you reset. So, so part of, again, this is some of, some of this is done for you for the, the processes here. So when you put a process into, um, When, when you start a process running, so when you dispatch the process, um, it will set the process's um, time used, uh, or sorry, it'll set the process's quantum used to be zero at the start of when, it, when it's dispatched and, start used and starting, starting to run on the CPU. And then every CPU cycle, so you should be calling CPU cycle every time we simulate a CPU cycle in the simulation, and that will implement both the time used and the quantum used, right? Uh, and then finally, though, uh, you can query a process to see if, um, if its quantum is exceeded, right? So basically, when uh, a, a, a process, so if the time slice quantum for the simulation is five time clicks, or five CPU cycles, uh, you can ask the running process, is its, qu is its quantum exceeded? And pass in what the simulation's time slice quantum is. And that'll tell you whether it has, whether it needs to be timed out or not. So at that point, um, uh, I mean, you know, that th those are kind of the mechanisms that are built into the processes that you've been given. Right, so for the for the time slice quantum to be able to simulate uh, the the round robin queuing discipline, you know you have to, to dispatch the process uh, that's at the front of the ready queue. You have to call the CPU cycle um, every time um, a um, every time a um, CPU event occurs in the simulation, uh, and then you have to be checking that. So this is all described in the. Um, description for our assignment two here. So, you know, every time you do a CPU cycle, you have to check the current running process to see if it's exceeded its time slice quantum. And if it has, um, it should be timed out and returned back to the ready queue. Um, all right, so I mean that's a little bit. I mean, you know, that's kind of a kind of a general question here. I mean, that's somewhat of the purpose of of the this this unit of our class. You know, talking about processes, or at least one of the main things that I emphasize. So talking about processes, talking about this idea of the states of, that a process can be in, um, and and then this idea of dispatching the process and timing it out if we're using. Um, some sort of a round robin queuing discipline or dispatching a process and the process becomes blocked on IO uh, and then eventually becomes unblocked when that IO finishes, so when its IO event is done. So. Um, okay, uh, some more specific things about the time slice quantum or about the queuing. I had another question back to about blocking and unblocking events, although um, the, the student might have to clarify a bit. I'm not completely certain. So uh, the issue of um, it could be part of a block event. 
right? So, I mean, uh, the block event is going to be called in the simulation only when, when a block happens in the simulation, and then unblock event will be called whenever an unblock occurs in the simulation, right? So I didn't, I didn't bring up or talk, I don't think I talked a lot about the sim files. I might have brought it up real quickly. Oops, not, not this one. But um, so for our assignment two, our sim files look something like this, right? So it's just a, a bunch of lines of, of what I think of as, as simulation events, right? So basically, you know, the, the, um, the run simulation that I've written for you opens up a simulation file, reads these lines one by one, and then calls. So whenever it reads a new, it calls the, uh, the new event for the, the simulator, and you had to implement the new event. Right? Um, and whenever it, it comes to a block, it calls block event, and it sends in the um, event ID. So these are just arbitrary numbers, but they're they're supposed to represent like some type of I/O, you know. So maybe I maybe uh, event ID eighty three represents uh, reading to uh, disk or reading to hard drive three on the system or something like that. All right, and then and then yeah, as if and whenever it whenever we read an unblock from a simulation file, we call the unblock event on the simulation. Um, with the event ID. So what you have to do is you have to look through the processes that you're managing, find the process that's currently blocked waiting on event, I, uh, event um, uh, the, the IO event 83 and unblock it and put it back to the ready queue. Okay. Um, all right, so kind of a specific question then. Um, so. So uh, we can go back and look at the test here. So it was asking about the test on line 511, um, which, which is part of the, the, the unit test for unblocking the event. So if you're failing that test, that means that uh, either you're not correctly um, fetching process three, so something's not quite right with your, your Git process, so you might wanna check that. But assuming that you're getting process three correctly, the process three is not in the expected thing. I mean, the most likely is for some reason it's not in the ready state, right? So part of unblocking event um, is you have to find the event that's waiting on event ID seven, and you have to unblock it and put it back into a ready state and put it back onto the ready onto your ready queue. However, you're implementing your ready queue. So, so yeah, there's there's a couple of things. So one thing is you have to call the unblock on process three. Uh, or, or I guess you have to maybe call ready on process three. Um, so yeah, once you find the process that was waiting on event seven, uh, and this should all be happening in your unblock um, method. So, so, so in unblock event, um, you, you first have to search. So, and then once you find your process, uh, you should be calling um, ready on it to put it back into a ready state. And then you should put your process, uh, you know, put it back onto the end of your ready queue. So uh, do, a, do an in queue of your process to the, to the end, to the back of your ready queue at that point. Um, So let's see here. So yeah, like I said, so, so basically what, that's what I'm describing here. So however you, you're keeping track of your processes and however you search to find it, once you identify the process that should be unblocked, um, you should call the unblock um, um, member function of the process. Um, so, so I've given a little, uh, yeah, so you should call unblock. Um, I guess so. Unblock probably puts it back into a ready state. Let's let's look at um, what unblock does specifically here. So yeah, so you should be calling unblock. So it puts it into the, to the ready state for you. 
uh, resets the, the, the time quantum back to zero. So the next time it's di dispatched, um, it will correctly keep track of how many time slice quantums it uses. And it resets the event ID back to the, the no event, or it's not waiting on anything. So. so yeah, so yeah, you should be calling the unblock. And then you'll also need to enqueue it back onto the end of your, um, your ready queue. So. Again, um, yeah, so um, at this point, um, the, the, um, I've had a question specifically about some code. So I'll be happy to go ahead and take a look at that. Um, although, yeah, you, you might want to go ahead and email it to me and, and I won't be able to look at it until uh, we kind of finish up the session here. So, um, um, uh, at first glance, so it looks like you're doing the right things like I was describing. So, um, so this, um, the, the code that, that um, is being asked about um, implies that there's some sort of a um, STL structure, or maybe it's just a plain array in C, or maybe it's a vector, but um, something that can be searched through. Um, and we're looking through and, and using the, the things that I talked about. So using the is waiting on event, which looks correct. Um, and if, if, if that's true, that it's waiting on that, um, it's calling the unblock. Um, and then um, calling ready queue, although something seems to be missing there. So maybe ready queue dot, um, um, you know, push to the back or something, depending on what your ready queue is. But uh, but yeah, so um, 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 at first glance, that looks like um, that's the right idea, basically, for the unblock. So so if, if that's not working, most likely what you would want to do is, um, I, I mean, I might, you know, I, I would either maybe get in and use the debugger, Right, um, and I think I've shown that before. Maybe I should try and see if uh, if we can show that again here, unless I have some more questions. But or, or you know, you can do some print f debugging. So you might want to, after you're done with your loop, after you do that, you might want to remember which process you found. Um, you know, or or you might want to first of all, you might want to check that you actually are finding a process. You know, so so make certain that you are. Uh, finding uh, a process and calling unblock on it or not. So, um, and then you might want to also check that process and, and query it. So, so is it actually in the ready state? And is it, um, um, and if we go back and look at this test here, uh, you know, is it back in the ready state? I mean, if you call, you are calling the unblock, so, so yeah, that, that implies somehow either you're doing it on the wrong process, so for some reason you're not finding the right process, or you're not finding any processes in this loop that, that you're doing. So yeah, you probably wanna debug that loop and, and just ensure that it really is uh, actually finding a process and then calling unblock and, um, and, and, and putting it on your ready queue there. Um, so I think I showed this before here, uh, but you know, again, uh, keep asking questions if you guys have them. Um, uh, you can run the, the debugger. Um, so what the, the F5 is set up to do in this class is um, I thought we had it set up to do something. Let me check here. Uh, maybe it's not 
So um, I showed this before. Um, so by default, it'll run the, the, the full simulator. So if you want to debug some stuff from the simulator, you might have to actually add some code in order to set things up so you can debug with it, um, basically. Um, Uh, okay. Let me check something here real quick. So, um, cause it looks like my, the, the debugging isn't quite set up here the way I was expecting it to be. So, you know, this is kind of a little bit about configuring Visual Studio Code, if anybody's interested. So if you want to set up your own tasks, you know, like build tasks and stuff, you have to create one of these tasks.json files. That, this is where it lives to do the stuff to um, um, to do the, the make all. So, uh, so there's this task that we'll call the make all to do a build, and the make clean that I had set up. Um, and then, oh no, that's not right. So yeah, that's, so that's, and then just the test there. But yeah, I wanted to check the, the debug, the setting up of the debug. Uh, Uh, launch.json. I, I thought I had that set up. Oh, yeah, there it is. So the debug is supposed to uh, use the our, our GNU debugger, GDB. Um, and yeah, it's supposed to use the sim file. Uh, not certain why that's not running. Oh, um, yeah, let me try restarting this. Did I, did I open this up incorrectly? Uh, So let me try open that back up again. So let's open the folder from the top level of our of our class here. Uh, Let's open the test back up. There we go, that's better now. Now I got my keyboard shortcut. So Control Shift C did a clean. Control Shift B does the make all. So again, these are all coming from the um, the launch dot json and the key bindings dot json is where the uh, control c control b and control t are set uh, and uh, here is where uh, 
we set up these these run tasks. Um, Okay, that's still building here. Let me go ahead and open up the um, assignment to sim.cpp as well. So. so like I showed kind of before, um, um, when you run the debugger, it'll, it'll, it'll do it in the, uh, the sim for you so yeah if you want to debug a specific thing though you might have to add some code in here for the for the particular thing that you're trying to uh to to to, to debug um so probably the easiest thing to do is just to comment out um all the command line argument parsing And then to do something like, um, and then maybe also comment out where we actually run the simulation. Uh, there, we finally built. So I won't run my tests, but. Um, But um, yeah, assuming my debugger is set up here, um, once once I create a simulation, I could um, really put this side by side. If I wanted to kind of test the block and the unblock for just as an example, um, we could try and do some of these things. So. Um, Um, So I'm trying to think that so right probably the easiest thing to do. So there's a lot of all these tests um, kind of rely on just re keep using the same simulation. So um, So yeah, what would be an easy example? So we could just do like send that new event to, to create a new process. Um, So oh, yeah, in this case, though, yeah, I haven't. I, I'm using our um, assignment. Um, I'm, I'm using the. You know, I don't have any anything implemented. So yeah, none of these things are going to do anything anyway. So um, what would be? I mean, I, I, let's just let's just say, for example, we, we could just go ahead and let's we'll say we're trying to start from the beginning here, um, and we want to do some debugging of. Some of the very first stuff that we were supposed to do. Um,
like, um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I guess we could start by just checking out like our, uh, the stuff I did do on, 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 when, on uh, Monday. So, um, so right, if we create a simulation and we set its time slice quantum to five, and if we call get time slice quantum, um, that if we rebuild it should rebuild just the simulator and then relink it together to a sim but now i should be able to um, run the debugger so um, i don't know if i showed this last time but uh, i think by default when you run the debugger it'll it'll stop at the very first line so you don't have to actually set a breakpoint if you want to just start stepping right from the very beginning um, I mean, alternatively, we could um, set a breakpoint, like for example, in our get time slice quantum function here that I'm trying to show an example of debugging here. So we could open up our process simulator again. And go down to the get time slice. So uh, our constructor, um, there it is. Anyway, um, yeah, so we could set like a breakpoint there, for example, um, or even set a breakpoint in our constructor if we wanted to. Um, and then, We should be able to do the F5 or, or the uh, run um, start debugging. And, and yeah, it'll start kind of by default. It should stop at the very first line of our main function. Then we can use either, uh, either, either kind of the GDB terminal commands like uh, in and S to go to the next line step, or you can use these up here to like step over. Or if I continued on, since I had the breakpoint, uh, like if I do a continue, it should, since I'm calling the constructor right now, it should just stop right over here in my constructor. So we can continue on. So now we're, we're stopped over here in the constructor where we are um, stepping over stuff. So, so we did all these things to initialize everything so in fact uh, so i don't remember if i pointed out these if i pointed out kind of all the features of the debugger kind of last time so you know so besides the basic commands for continuing and stepping over and stepping in and stopping the debug session over usually on the left hand side you'll get your your function call stack so right now you know we started the main function main function called the constructor the process simulator constructor which is where we're at right now um, you know, I got a list of breakpoints down here. Uh, here we've got our all of our local variables and global variables. So this 
will be the, this object that we're currently inside of. So in particular, we can find the member variables for this um, simulation right now. So it has a time slash quantum of five that we just initialized and has um, system time of zero and um, um, let's see if I do one more step, we'll initialize all these. Um, okay, well, I kind of stepped over some stuff there and kind of missed, but, uh, but yeah, now we, we kind of came over and um, we're now in our get time slice quantum function, right? So, so now you can see that this was initialized and, and, you know, we've got five for the time slice quantum, which is what we should be returning here. And then we should output that. I could keep stepping here, so we step. Now we, we return back from the get time slice quantum, we're back to the main function here. And if I step over this, um, we should see that we get the output. So you might have to find your terminal, but we should see, in this case, I was outputting some, some stuff using C out. So, so we got our output there. So yeah, if you've implemented more stuff and you want to like debug unblock event or something, you'd have to add some extra code here to like like create a new new process using a new event and then maybe dispatch it and then maybe do the block and then do the unblock and and um, but uh, but yeah, that's kind of what you have to do to use the debugger um, for these assignments here. So. The reason why, I mean, if, if you're thinking, if you're asking uh, why don't we just kind of debug, uh, allow us to debug, um, you know, set breakpoints and run the debugger with the, uh, with, with the unit tests. Um, what I find is that the, 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 the unit test framework doesn't work very well with the debugger. It can, it can be hard to see things uh, like that. Um, so that, that's why by default um, it uses the, the sim. Uh, if you if you run a debug session instead of using um, the, the the unit tests, so you can try it out. Let's go ahead and stop there. So so hit stop to stop our debug session. So I don't know if there's an easier way to, to like set up an alternative debug session or not. Uh, there might be. I haven't used Visual Studio Code a lot. Um, I'm just going to close everything off. So I know if, if we changed um, Instead of saying in the launch.json, if we if we said to use the the tests um, instead of the uh, what's the name of our test file again? It's um, test. So if we say use test instead of sim, it would use that for the debug session. See if that works. So, uh, if we reopen our CSCI four thirty simulations, and um, Yeah, I won't try and rebuild. Let's see, if, let's see if we just run the debugger now after I changed it to use the, the test, if that works here. So F5.
So here, because I had the, the breakpoint, it started running um, and, and it stopped at, um, um, oh yeah, the, the, so that's one of the, 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 the things is that, um, let me stop this debug session here and let's get rid of this breakpoint from here. And let's get rid of this from the process simulator. So I think one of the difficulties is um, it doesn't always do the breakpoints very well using the catch framework if you try and break on inside of these unit test cases. So um, like if I wanted to start break, if I want to start stepping from let's say the second unit test, which was the first kind of code that you had to do, we could try and set a breakpoint there and run the debugger F5. So here it stopped, oh, well, huh. so there it stopped in the, um, th this is the main function that the catch framework um, gives you. So, so it did that time it stopped before it started uh, doing stuff. Let's continue on from there, see if it stops at my breakpoint. Uh, oh yeah, there, so we got that breakpoint. So, yeah, step there, I can step in maybe. Yeah, so the, the big reason why I tend not to try and debug using the catch framework is, yeah, what you see when you step in, uh, you, you, it won't step into your function, it's gonna step into catch framework stuff. The um, and things uh, it can be tough to get to where you want to um, trying trying to, to use the debugger with the with the unit tests for stepping through stuff there so all right anyway um, that was kind of a bit of a, a kind of a detour there um, So yeah, like I said, I, I tend to prefer just to, to use the our sim with our own main function um, and then just put in the code that I want to debug. So, so put in a few lines of code for whatever calls to the simulator or whatever I, I want to debug into there. So. All right. Um, so um, anybody want to ask some other questions here? Um, okay. Yeah, so kind of last chance, if, if nobody has a kind of a last minute question here, um, I'm probably going to stop the recording here and in the session in a bit.